بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his wives To bless his family members To bless all his companions To bless every single one of us And to grant us all every form of goodness We are talking about the Prophet Jesus May peace be upon him The reason why I say it in the English language Is because many people who do not know the Arabic term need to know what we believe about the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. The Quran has mentioned or named several surahs after either the mother who was Mary, may peace be upon her, of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, or the family known as Ali Imran. And in fact, there is another surah known as Al Ma'idah which means the laid table and that laid table cloth is connected to what Isa alayhi salatu wasalam brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there are many such surahs in the Quran and uh, chapters in the Quran we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us the truth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared the mother of Jesus may peace be upon him very very carefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared her by her prior to her birth being dedicated by her mother for the place of worship and for ensuring that she will be dedicated. She had made this promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not knowing that she was bearing a female child. But when the female child came, they fulfilled the promise. She was born an orphan, meaning the father Imran, who was a very, very pious man, had passed away. And Imran had a record for being a very, very upright man, a very, very good sheikh. He used to lead the people in prayers and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Zakaria, who is the uncle of Maryam or Mary, may peace be upon her, was the one who brought her up. And he was responsible. And we learned yesterday about the life of Zakaria and what happened. As a result, she was also a very, very pious girl. She grew up. Allah gave her lots of wisdom, lots of knowledge. She learned under the tutorship of Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about various miracles that occurred when she was still very young. As she was being prepared for something very, very great to happen. One of the greatest miracles of all time was to happen to Mary, may peace be upon her, Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what happened. Earlier, when she was still quite young, growing up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message to her via the angels. And the angels told her, O oh Maryam, Allah has chosen you, purified you from all polytheism. Allah has made you one who will worship Him alone. So you are pure in every way, purified in your reputation, purified in your character and conduct, but above all, purified in your worship. It will not be rendered for anyone besides your maker. And Allah has chosen you above all the women of your time. Subhanallah. Therefore, O Maryam, we want to inform you and instruct you. Submit unto Allah. Uknuti li rabbiki. Submit for your own Rabb, the one who made you. And find yourselves from the ones who bow down and from the ones who are prostrate solely to their maker. So Allah says, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the news and the information of the unseen that we are giving you. We are telling you the true version of the story of Mary and Jesus and Zachariah and John and so of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after some time, she continued to worship Allah and she was very pious and she had her place of worship within a place of worship her own corner and cubicle she had a cubicle in the sense that there was a partition between her and those who would come from her members of her family she was in her own corner and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter we called out to her again in fact in one place allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah maryam and remember in the book the story of mary may peace be upon her maryam alayha salatu wassalam when she took a place for her own worship within the place of worship she had her own cubicle towards 
the west. It was sorry, it was facing the east. It was facing the east. Makanan Sharqiyan. It was a place facing the east. So she had a little corner by the eastern window. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says she had had a hijab or a curtain between her and her family members. She was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her family members on the other side, as we know, we have cubicles sometimes in the corners of the masajid where people want to engage in itikaf and they want to spend time dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says she had had her place. We sent the angel Jibreel or the archangel Gabriel to her in the form of a handsome looking man and he went into her cubicle immediately she uttered words of protection from Allah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from anything mischievous she says I seek protection in Allah from you so if you are intelligent if you are fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will understand that I have sought the protection of the maker and the creator don't harm me immediately Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam says, I am the angel from your Rabb. I have come to give you good news that you shall bear a child who will be very pure. She had this news. Now she is shocked. She is surprised. She is still listening to the information. Let's look at how it was worded in another place in the Quran. In Surah Ala Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the angels told Maryam, Mary, the daughter of Imran, that Allah is giving you glad tidings of a word from him. What is that word? We spoke about it yesterday. Kun, be, and it will be. The word is kaf and noon. We said yesterday, amruhu bainal kafi wa noon. The instruction of Allah is between a kaf and a noon. Once those words are uttered, be, it automatically is. So we are giving you good news of a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will be a sign. There will be a child. We are naming him from now. So she is being told this already while she is sitting in her own seclusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, His name shall be the Christ, Isa, Jesus, may peace be upon him, the son of Mary. He will be known as the son of a female. All of us here, we are known as the son of a male. In the sense that you are called Abdullah, your father is Abdurrahman, you are Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman, you are Abdullah, the son of Abdurrahman. However, when it comes to Isa, he was known by his mother's name, Isa, the son of Mary. Amazing, she is listening, she is obviously in awe, she is trying to digest. She knew that Allah is preparing her for something great, but she is getting the information, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He will be honored. He will be honored in this world as well as in the next. Very honored man. And he will be from amongst those very close to Allah in the life after. In the sense that in the Akhirah, he will also be very, very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this boy, this child that is going to come to you, honored and very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be speaking to people from the cradle. So she is being told this already in advance. He will be speaking to people from the cradle as well as later on when he is aged. And he is from amongst those who will be pious. He will be very pious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Maryam alayha salatu was salam. She heard this news. And she understood it very carefully. Before she knew it already, Jibreel alayhi salam had blown what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed him to blow. And she was already she had conceived she already had the child in her, in her belly in her womb now she is surprised firstly she is clean she is a virgin not married in any way no form of mischievous she was never ever immoral immodest not at all she was dedicated she barely came out of the place of worship unless for necessity and now she is being told this is what is going to happen so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says how can I bear a child when no man has touched me? And I am not from amongst those who are unchaste. I've never done anything wrong, immoral, unacceptable. I have maintained the purity of the highest level. And you are telling me that I'm going to bear a child. The response came. The response came. That is it. It is declared and decreed. 
and it is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very, very easy for your creator who has created to do this. And we will make him a sign for entire mankind. Let us pause there for a moment. The circle of creation and the Qudra and power of the creator was being closed. What do we mean? Allah has created without the involvement of a male or a female, such as Adam. The first human being was Adam. May peace be upon him. There was no male involved, no female involved. Allah said be and he was created from dust, soil and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, the second probability, Allah created through a male without the involvement of a female. Who was created in that way? Hawa or Eve, may peace be upon her. Through a male, no involvement of female. Then there was every one of us. After those two, everyone who came thereafter, they were created via male and female. That's the third probability. There's one more left to close the circle to show you the power of Allah. What is that? To create via a female without the involvement of a male. Allah left it for the time when Isa alayhi salam was sent. The Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. He was that miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with no involvement of a male. Not that he was the son of Allah. Astaghfirullah. Allah forbid. He was not the son of God, but he was a creature created miraculously by the word of Allah. What was that word? Allah said, be and he was. Just like Adam was created before, Allah says in the Quran, the example of Jesus is just like the example of Adam for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created Adam with some dust or some soil and he said, be and he was. So Allah did the same with Jesus, may peace be upon him. He said, be and he was. So Isa alayhi salam began to grow in the womb of his mother and his mother is now pondering and thinking and concerned. She's been given good news. He's going to be pious. He's going to be good. He's going to learn. He's going to teach. He's going to have revelation. He's going to guide the people. He will be able to speak. And Allah gave this news and information to the mother prior to the birth. She already knew this. And he is going to be able to speak to people from the cradle as well as later on. So from the very early days, he was going to be able to speak to people. Now, Maryam alayhi salatu was salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this. And Allah says, she held this child to a place, a little bit of a distance from where she was. She was in Jerusalem. She decided to go to Bethlehem, Bethlehem. She decided to go to Bethlehem. And when she got there, she was busy preparing. She was seeing, thinking. She was worried. She was very worried. Why was she worried? One is she knows she is pure. She is clean. On one hand, to deliver is a very big worry, tension. The secret is don't worry. That's the secret. But who doesn't worry? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all our women folk. The second concern, I'm going to take this child. How will people receive this child? I've been given responses, answers. I've been told who he is. I know everything, but these people will accuse me. They'll accuse the child. They might decide to do something against the child. What will happen? All this worry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the pains of childbirth drove her to the stump of, or to a trunk of a date tree. So the, the date palm, the trunk of it, she had got to it and she's holding it due to the pain of childbirth and she is hoping to herself saying to herself i wish i was dead before this and long forgotten because she is worried she doesn't want to go against the decree of allah not at all but she is wishing it's going to be so difficult i wish i were dead and i wish i was forgotten and i wish this did not happen to me so immediately allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he called from beneath now the question is who called one of two either by the time she was holding this trunk as support she gave birth and the child spoke now this is also mentioned in some of the books of tafsir some of the mufassirin say the child spoke. And this is, sounds very correct in the sense that it sounds very accurate but there is another opinion that it was the angel that spoke either way it is a message from allah i feel that the more correct opinion is she had given birth as she had held support on that particular stump and the child as the child was now beneath her the child called out fanada nada in the arabic language means one male is calling he called who called 
possibly the child. Do not worry. Do not fear. Don't worry. Just look beneath you. Allah has caused a spring of water to gush. Now this was a desert. There was no water. She needed something to drink. She was on her own delivering. No support besides that of Allah, which was more than enough. And she had this stump that she was holding on to, a trunk of a date palm. So Allah says, we've made water for you here. Just take a look. And not only will we give you a drink miraculously today, O Mary, but we are going to give you also fresh date, rich in mineral and vitamin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, shake this date trunk a little bit. The trunk of the date palm, shake it a bit. The beautiful dates, fresh dates will drop. So eat and drink as much as you want and thank Allah. Be happy and be glad. This is the miracle. And over and above that, it's either the child who's speaking or the message of Allah. The child is saying, whenever you see a human being, tell them I have promised Allah and made a vow that I'm not going to speak to any human being. So don't talk today on that particular day. I'm not going to talk today. So as she went out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says she now arrived it was late afternoon when she arrived with the child back to her people going back into the place where she was in seclusion holding the child at her chest and walking very carefully very very calm relaxed her face was beaming with light and she was looking very happy normally when a person's committed a sin they're very sad they don't want anyone to know she's holding the child covering the child very well the people began to see and started saying isn't that the mary who's supposed to be in the place of worship isn't she the one who's supposed to be the pious isn't she the one who is the descendant of the prophet harun the word harun is used it's either referring to some pious person in the community so they used to call her the sister of harun because there was someone known as harun who was also very pious and she was also very pious so they say sister of harun oh what is more correct, she was from the lineage of the Prophet Harun, who was also from Banu Israel. And because he was so pious and she had his blood in her being from his lineage, they always reminded her, you are from the family of such a pious man. Your mother is pious, your father is pious, your generations, your grandfathers, it dates back all the way to Harun. So Allah says, Oh Mary, you have come up with something very, very grave, very, very uncommon, unprecedented, something very dangerous and detrimental, something huge. What is this all about? Oh, sister of Harun. I explained who is the Harun, one of the two. Oh, sister of such a pious man. Oh, person who is from the lineage of the Prophet Harun. Your father never engaged in adultery. He was a very, very pious man. Your mother never engaged in adultery. Your father did not commit sin like this. What is this all about? Now this was an accusation of adultery, an accusation of engaging in illicit activity. How did you start? How did you become pregnant? How did you get this child? They're all asking, they're accusing. Who were the people at the time? They were Jewish people in the sense that they were Banu Israel, the children of Israel. Israel was Yaqub, Jacob. The prophet Jacob was known as Israel. So these are the children of Jacob. Jesus was sent to the children of Jacob. He was sent to Banu Israel, the children of Israel, as it is known. So these were the people around accusing the mother, telling her, you have committed a very, very grave sin. Your father wasn't like this. Your mother wasn't like this. She knew the child is going to speak. Subhanallah. I don't need to say anything today. So when she pointed to him, they looked at her. They realized she doesn't want to talk. She's now pointing at the child. Is she foolish? They said, how can we speak to a child in a cradle here? Imagine a newborn baby. You want to talk to a baby. And as they were in this discussion and they were talking to each other and talking to her and telling her, how foolish are you? You want us to talk to a baby? They heard the baby say, I am the worshiper of Allah, the slave of Allah. Allah has given me the book, the revelation, and he has made me a prophet. Imagine a little child talking baby speaking and Allah has blessed me wherever I go it is blessed for as long as I live 
Allah has instructed me to engage in prayer and to give out charity, to be very charitable. May Allah make us steadfast with our prayer and our charities. And may He accept that from us as well. And He has instructed me to be obedient to my mother. Allahu Akbar. Here you have the role of the mother once again. This was special, but that rule applies to all of us for our mothers and our fathers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He has instructed me to be obedient, to be dutiful unto my mother. There was no father involved. That's why Allah says my mother. And he has not made me from amongst the sinful. And he has not made me from amongst those who are unfortunate. And peace be upon me. Child is still speaking. Subhanallah. These people are baffled. They are gobsmacked to use the right term. Don't know what to say. Silent. Just watching. He's saying, may peace be upon me. The day I was born. The day I shall die. The day I will be resurrected. May the peace of Allah be upon me. He is speaking. They are shocked. So how do they react? These were priests. These were rabbis. These were people who used to teach the religion. Watching. They had just accused someone of adultery. And what happened? As they are watching. They are looking. They are hearing. There is no ways this is magic. There is no ways this is anything but a miracle. There is no ways this is anything but a sign from Allah the Creator. It is miraculous. They know the piety of this woman. They know the family. They know everything. They can see she's not worried. They can see the miracle child. They can see everything. But they are worried that if we now acknowledge this child, they are thinking future. This child is going to take the carpet from beneath our feet. Pull it. And what will happen? We won't have leadership anymore. Nobody's going to follow us anymore. People will now follow him. He is going to be the boss. He's going to be above us. The best thing for us to do is from now, let us fight him from that stage. So they continued. No, we're not interested. We would like to un you to understand this is a sin. You have committed immorality. You've come with a child. This child is illegal, illegitimate. This, was, this is what the Jewish people had said. And the Quran makes mention of this. They continued accusing Maryam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we purified her. She was pure. And they continued accusing. In the meantime, she had gone back to the place of worship. And mention is not made of the detail of how the child grew up, but the child grew up. And later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what happened to Isa alayhi salam. Before we get there, let's make mention of something important. There are people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says have started calling this young boy the son of God. Why was this? This was because they didn't see the father. To them there was no father. So when they were told this is, the, this is a miracle from Allah, they said, well, that is the son of Allah. And they started saying, this is the son of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nay, it is not befitting for the creator to take a son, to have a begotten son. It is blasphemed to relate to the creator who only needs to say be and anything he wants to make is created automatically. It is blasphemous to relate to him to say he has a begotten son. May Allah safeguard us from such blasphemy. So in Islam, we believe to say that the God Almighty has a son is blasphemous. The Quran speaks about how sick that blasphemy is and the Quran says how can they say that Allah the most merciful has a son and it is not befitting for the most merciful to have a son Allah says this statement is so blasphemous that the skies want to tear apart and the earth wants to explode and the mountains want to fall prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the severity and seriousness of such a dangerous statement against the maker himself. So even the creation of Allah are bearing witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not taken a son. And they are agitated at the fact that people are saying this. Yes, he did not have a father, but Adam neither had a father nor a mother. And Eve neither had, meaning Eve did not have a father. A mother, meaning we cannot even call Adam the father. She was also created miraculously. And when it comes to Jesus, may peace be upon him. He did not have a father. That's what the Quran says. But 
You cannot say the son of Allah and the begotten. The word beget is so blasphemous. If you have to check the meaning of it in the Oxford dictionary, you'd probably hide your face. May Allah protect us. How can we say that for the maker of the universe? He doesn't need that. He is powerful. We believe the maker only needs to say be and it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this is a very powerful statement. Allah says, as this child grew, the same things Allah had promised the mother, he got. What did he get? Al-Kitaba. He got the book, the revelation, Al-Hikmata. Allah gave him wisdom and Allah gave him prophethood. And Allah gave him the Torah. He knew the Torah off by heart. Remember, he met the prophet John, may peace be upon him, Yahya alayhi salam. It is reported that there was a discussion between the two of them at one stage. And Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him, tells Yahya in one narration that you should pray for me. So John, Yahya alayhi salam says to him, no, you should pray for me. So he says, no, you are better than me. He says, what do you mean I am better than you? So Yahya or John, may peace be upon him, says to Isa or to Jesus here, he says, you declared peace upon yourself. The creator declared peace upon you. And you said, may peace be upon me. And in my case, Allah is saying that may peace be upon him. So it goes back to Isa. Jesus, may peace be upon him, says, well, in your case, Allah declared the peace. In my case, I declared it myself. So this was just a discussion because Yahya, the same thing happened. He also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we granted him as a child to Zakaria after a long time. Remember, these two were cousins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have blessed him. We have granted him peace and salam and so on. And this in the case of Isa alayhi salam, he speaks about himself. I am blessed. I am the one who shall remain in peace and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very interestingly uses the word salam. Salam refers to peace. And we all use that term as well. May peace be upon you. We use the word assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon all of us. That is the word we normally use. And the peace also means no harm shall reach him. We're going to need that in a few moments when we come to how they tried to murder him. No harm shall reach Jesus. Not at all. He is a miracle of Allah. He is the word of Allah. The ruh, the soul was blown by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he got the Torah, he got the goodness, he started preaching. And as he started preaching, he always told the people, our maker, the one we worship, the supreme, Allah is the one who made us. He is my Rabb and he is your Rabb. My maker, your maker. The one who protects me, the one who protects you. The one who provides for me, the one who provides for you. So worship him alone and nobody else. This was the message of Jesus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon him and may peace be upon all of us as well. So when we worship, who do we worship? And this is the beauty of Islam. We say Islam is a religion that has no risk. We do not worship a person, nor do we worship a stone, nor do we worship a stick, nor do we worship a prophet, nor do we worship a grave, nothing. We worship whoever made me. That's who I worship. That is what all the messengers said. We need to turn the pages of the Quran. We will shiver when we come to see every messenger came with exactly the same message when it comes to belief. The belief was all the same. They taught worship the one who made you, no one else. So when we Muslims, when we bow down or we put our heads on the ground, a lot of people think we might be worshiping a black box in Mecca. Some people think we're worshiping the Prophet Muhammad. Some people think we're worshiping this and that. No, we are worshiping the one who made us. That is the one for whom I put my head on the ground. This is why Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Because everyone is fed up of worshipping things, of worshipping wealth, worshipping people, going through Allah via the priest and via the, the church and via this and via a person and via someone else who's an archbishop or whoever else. In Islam, no confession to nobody. You confess to your maker in the darkest hour of the night. Oh my maker, I have done wrong. I admit my error. I regret it. I seek your forgiveness and I won't do it again. Those four conditions, your sin is wiped out. May Allah wipe out our sins. Allahumma innaka afuhun tuhibbul afwa fa'afuhanna. 
Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive us. That is a powerful dua we should be making on a night like this. So we have Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he began to call the people. He was so compassionate. He was such a beautiful man. He was so loving. He spoke to people with so much love and passion. He really wanted them to earn paradise. And he was such a beautiful human being. Not only was he a person who was very good looking, but at the same time, calm, relaxed individual with qualities that were super, subhanallah. And he was brought up in a beautiful, fantastic manner with the Torah. And on top of it, Allah revealed the Injil to him. The Injil meaning the Bible was revealed to Isa. We know that the Bibles that are in the hands of the people today, they themselves are disputing as to which is the correct version. So I normally say, please solve your mess and your problem amongst yourselves. When you have one version, come to us. We'll then look into it. But until the time you don't have one version, how can you come and preach it to us? We have one Quran, no two versions. We are preaching it to you. We stand on a higher position. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We believe in Jesus. You cannot be a Muslim if you don't believe in Jesus. May peace be upon him. But we believe the truth. We don't blaspheme anyone. I made mention of it yesterday and the previous day. The minute you hear a narration blaspheming any messenger of Allah, you throw it out of the window. We don't need it. We don't want it. We don't even want to hear it. No matter where it has come from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Isa alayhi salam noticed that these people are all disbelieving, no one wants to accept my message. He uttered a word. He asked a question. Who is going to be from amongst the helpers of Allah? Who wants to help the cause of their maker? So there were a certain number of people. Some narrations say 17 people, but the bulk of narrations say there were 12 people who came forth and they said, Allah says, the Hawariyun, the disciples. There was a certain number of men. I told you the most correct opinion. They were 12. The Quran says they came up and they said, we believe in Allah. We will assist the cause. You write our names or bear witness that we are from amongst those who are submitters unto our maker and creator. Never did Jesus may peace be upon him call anybody to worship him. He always said worship the maker who made you. And he always came up with the statements that were very clear cut. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deeper understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of some of the miracles that were granted to the prophet Jesus may peace be upon him. What were these miracles? Allah says, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as a messenger to Banu Israel. Banu Israel meaning the Jewish people. When he came, they split into two. There was a group that accepted him as a messenger. And the group that rejected him as a messenger. And they began or they continued to say that this is an illegitimate child born outside of wedlock. May Allah protect us. So those who accepted his message were known as Nasara. Nasara meaning Christians, those who accepted Jesus Christ and those who did not, they remained Jewish. But according to us, the prophet of the time is who you are supposed to be behind. So if we were alive at the time of Jesus, what were we supposed to have been? Followers of Jesus. If we were alive at the time of Moses, may peace be upon him. Who were we supposed to have followed? Prophet Moses. And if we are now here at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are we supposed to be following? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have Musa, we have Isa, and we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon all of them. But the Jews stop at Musa alayhi salam. The peak of their era was the time of Solomon, Sulaiman alayhi salam. The Quran speaks about it. We spoke about it too here a few days ago. And when it comes to the Christians, the peak of their era was the time of Jesus. Isa alayhi salam, they don't accept any messenger thereafter. They say he was na'udhu billah, God or the son of God or a party or a part of a trinity. Islam rejects all that. Islam says no, he was an upright messenger who came with miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His birth was a miracle and at that time there was medicine was at its peak. Medicine was at its peak. So what happened? You find many people who were sick and the doctors came in and the doctors were regarded as top people who could cure. But there were certain sicknesses that could not be cured. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Isa alayhi salam came with the following miracles. Isa alayhi salam speaking when he was a child, but it happened later on. He made 
a bird like statue of clay and blew in it suddenly it developed wings and flew off as a real bird that's what the Quran says that was a miracle given to the Prophet Isa Jesus may peace be upon him he would make something out of clay image of a bird blow into it it would fly off as a real bird so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says three things are mentioned in this part of the verse he was given the miracle by the power of Allah this is not him he says this is done by the leave of Allah by the permission of Allah Allah gives all the prophets whatever they had was from Allah by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says Allah gave me the permission to do this to a bird secondly those who were born blind when he wiped his hand over their eyes rubbed slightly they began to see they opened their eyes this was not we spoke about miracles a few days ago of nowadays where people use the jinn to cure people this was a miracle of a prophet there is a difference between the miracle of a prophet and something that is unacceptable may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us light so that we can see and may allah grant us eyesight some people have sight but they don't see the signs of allah they are blinded to them so here allah is saying he had this miracle jesus may peace be upon him could cure people who were born blind that is what the quran says and the quran says over and above that when people had the disease of leprosy the lepers he would touch them and they would be cured their skin would return as pure as ever as clean as ever as healthy as ever and on top of that one of the biggest miracles that he had after a person had died he could go there and bring them back to life by the will of allah and this is mentioned in the quran and he says it is not from me it is from my maker allahu akbar this is given to me by the power of Allah. Why? Because the doctors used to say that they can prolong the life of people. So Allah says, hang on. You think you can prolong the life of people? Let them die. We will bring them back to life. Subhanallah. So he was one step higher. All those who wanted to see, they knew this is not medicine. This is no joke. This is no coincidence. This is something from the maker himself. Nobody can give life to the dead besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, these were some of the miracles that happened. Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Now let's get to another point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him, instructed his disciples to fast for a month. And they fasted. And when they fasted, they now said, you know, we all have fasted, mashallah, for a month. And we all would like goodness. Allah says, you finish the prescribed time. You praise Allah, declare his greatness for what he has given you. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order that you may be thankful, Allah has given you the day of Eid. The day of Eid is a day of happiness. So here, the disciples asked him, listen to what Allah says. Oh Jesus, oh Isa, we want you to bring forth. Is it possible for your Rabb to bring forth a laid tablecloth? A laid tablecloth from heaven for us we fasted the whole month now we need something from Allah so Isa alayhi salam Allah says he said be fearful of Allah if you are true believers be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they continued asking they said no 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 we don't mean that we are believers but we would like it for a reason here's the reason we want to eat from it some food from heaven we want to eat from it so they said we want to eat from it we want our hearts to be more at ease that really it is true what we have asked you you have brought it for us we will believe we will be the witnesses and so on now it is reported that some of these disciples their belief within their heart was not very strong they were still a little bit shaky because the whole community was against them and the community didn't want a lot of them were on the side of those who had rejected the prophet jesus may peace be upon him so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in fact, these people continued. Isa alayhi salam made a dua. Jesus, may peace be upon him, supplicated his creator. And he says, Oh my maker, send for us a laid tablecloth of food so that it can come to us as a point of happiness, a day of joy, so that the first and the last of us can all eat from it. Let it be a sign and it will be a sign for those who are here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
Okay, I'm sending it to you. Here it comes. Subhanallah. The tablecloth, Allah says, we have laid it completely and we're sending it down. If after I send that laid tablecloth and you have all enjoyed the food and seen what it was all about, then if anyone still disbelieves, I will punish him a severe punishment. Let him know that. So Allah sent the laid tablecloth. MashaAllah, it is reported that they ate. Whether or not it was the last supper, Allah knows best. But they ate, you know, in the testaments, they speak of a last supper. Whether or not it was that, Allah knows best. But they ate and it is reported that so many people ate. The food was not depleted. This was a sign. It was a miracle. Thousands of people according to some narrations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this in the Quran. Now, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something that happened to the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. The people began to get fed up of him because he was taking away their popularity. Those who were supposedly religious, those who had followers, their followers were now slowly talking about this messenger who came with this miracle, that miracle. He was the talk of the town that created jealousy in the hearts of some of these people who had rejected him. So they hatched a plan. What was the plan? They went to the king of the time and they told him there is a man called Jesus of Bethlehem. This Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, he is saying this and saying that and his eyes are on your kingdom. He wants your seat. In fact, he is going around saying he is the king. Now this is blasphemy. This is incorrect. Lies, jealousy, a plan and a ploy. This king without finding anything out, nothing at all. He decides we can sort him out by doing what? Send down men, look for him. Now I have not made mention of all the difficulties suffered by Jesus. We have not gone into those details where the people made him suffer, but he was calm. He was very, very calm, very forgiving. He never wanted to revenge anybody. No one, not at all. He just continued with his work and he was always positive, not negative. And every time there was an opportunity to call people towards the Almighty, he used it and he was very patient and calm. And they began to say, oh, this is what a wonderful man and so on. But the others who were disbelieving, they fell to this plot. So when the people came, they wanted to know, where is Jesus? He was nowhere to be found. Where is he? We want to know. Now, the disciples knew where he was. And I'm mentioning to you one narration. The disciples knew where he was. There was one of the disciples. The name given is Judas Iscariot. Allah knows best who exactly he was, but one of the disciples. And he decided to become a traitor. In fact, Shaitan overtook him. The devil overtook him and he led the men of this king and the Jewish people who were behind wanting to murder Jesus, may peace be upon him, to the room where he was. And there was a little window. So as this one man goes in to confirm that Jesus is in the room, who was he? He was the disciple. They sent him in. You go and confirm that he is in the room. They, this man goes into the room and he is now a traitor. Yet he's supposed to be a disciple. He goes into the room and he is asking Isa alayhi salam. He's just confirming that he's there. And at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the face of Judas. So it became the face of Jesus. And Allah took Jesus away through that window, gone up into the heavens in the proper form of the human being that he was. Taken up, ascension of Jesus. This is the Islamic version of the Quran. He was taken up completely well before anybody could harm him. Allah says at the beginning, Wassalamu alayya. Peace be upon me, they won't harm me at all. Nothing. So Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, was not harmed at all, nothing. He was taken up and the face of this traitor was made to be the face of Jesus. So now he was taking long to come out. A little while later, he comes out. These people are looking. They see Jesus. They go and hold him. He says, hey, I am Judas. No ways. So if you are Judas, where is Jesus? And if you are Jesus, where is Judas? They went back in. So they didn't know. They were also a little bit confused, but facially they knew this is Jesus. And this man is continuing to say, I am not Jesus. I am Judas. They took him 
they put a huge cross for him they nailed him into the cross and according to one narration they they took a crown of thorns as a means of disgrace for him and they placed it on his head and they were happy telling everyone we have crucified jesus but allah knows jesus was taken well before anybody could harm him subhanallah no one harmed him so where is jesus right now may peace be upon him he is alive he is in heaven he is with allah we believe he is going to come back allah says indeed he will be one of the signs of the coming of the hour he will come down just before the hour muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam describes the place where he will come down in asham at the moment it's the country of syria he says the, the eastern part a certain place some of the scholars say close to where the amawi masjid is today and he will come down in a specific place allahu akbar he's going to come down towards the end of the time and allah says all the true people of the book will believe in him before his final death when he comes he will live for a certain number of years he will rule he will spread the truth he will spread the oneness he will destroy the cross and he will do so many things he will kill the antichrist and what have you and thereafter he will also die and allah says they will believe in him before he dies he will come with these signs and this is why allah says they did not kill jesus nor did they crucify jesus but they were confused about him and those who were disputing about this Judas, Allah says they were in doubt even when they were crucifying this man and even before and even after they are in plain doubt up to today who exactly was crucified. If you take a look at the biblical versions of the crucifixion, so many contradictions in the story. So many. You just have to pick up a book or two of comparative studies between Islam and Christianity and you will see the amount of discrepancies that are in the story of how Jesus was crucified because it was not Jesus who was crucified. There was a face of Judas that was made to now look like Jesus. And this is why they crucified a man believing that he was the one but because he was a traitor, he was punished by the Almighty. Now the Christians believe he died on the cross as a redemption for our sins. We Muslims say it is an injustice for us sitting here in Cape Town in this masjid to say there is a lot of adultery, a lot of armed robbery, a lot of sin. So in order for us to absolve ourselves from all this, let's pick the most pious from amongst us and crucify him in that corner. And inshallah, that will mean all our sins are expiated. That is injustice. The gravest injustice is to punish a person who did not commit the sin. So as Muslims, we believe it is blasphemous to think that the Almighty would punish someone on another person's behalf. It's blasphemous. Again, another piece of blasphemy. But this is our belief. Remember, our belief is pristine, pure, undebatable. You can't argue with it. It has no blasphemy in it at all. Let's talk about something else. If he was a son of God, or as some of them say part of god or some of them say god himself so god was crucified what's going to happen to all of us allahu akbar and this is why we say that that is another blasphemy to call him a part of god to call him a son of god to call him these names that is all blasphemous to the real maker the one who created all of us instead of saying oh jesus you say oh my maker Redeem me, oh my maker, forgive me, oh my maker, when I return to you, have mercy on me. The minute you say, oh Jesus, have mercy on me, there's a very, very big risk. I like to tell my Christian friends, you know what? You are either right or wrong, but I'm always right. I say, oh my maker, forgive me. Oh you who is the owner of forgiveness, forgive me. Oh you whom I'm going to return to, have mercy on me the day I return to. I have never taken a risk. The minute you say, oh Jesus, forgive my sin, you're taking a very big risk. Because even according to your own statement, you know, in religion, nobody can guarantee anything. That's the beauty of religion. You need to have belief to believe. And this is why Islam is all about belief and all religions are about belief. But you have to use your sense. You have to apply the common knowledge that Allah has given you. So you have to ask yourself, look, we need to believe, but believe what? Believe without risk because you live once, only once. So if you are to risk it once, it's over. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. Now you find another statement. People say Jesus' blood was spilled for you. May Allah forgive us. As we said, it encourages people to commit sin. Number one. Number two, it means the Almighty 
is more unjust than the tyrant rulers of today who punish innocent people. That is another piece of blasphemy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I hope we have clarified a lot. So Islam says all this is blasphemous. We rise above all of that. We say Jesus was not God, nor was he the son of God, nor was he the part of a trinity, nor was he crucified. He was an honored messenger born to Mary without a father by the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of the creator who had before him already created Adam and Eve and who had created every single one of us. The power of the same maker created Jesus and allowed him to speak from the cradle and clarified who he was and gave him the Torah and gave him the, the Bible and told him to teach the people. And later on, he had so many miracles that were manifest with his hands that Allah had granted him permission to do and to show the people those who accepted were successful and those who rejected had failed. And thereafter, they planned to kill him. And when they planned to kill him, they were in confusion as to who exactly they crucified because Allah took him away well before they could harm him.